Come Holy Spirit, come fill my heart, refresh my soul. This is your season of grace come with your host, Spirit, Patrick Henry Edit. Get ready for Grace Revolution. Until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. The kingdom, the administration of grace, the administration of God, the gift of God, the blessings of God, what God has given to you, it is by grace, but you fight to take it. You know, the gift of the firstborn in the house of Isaac was a free gift, but somebody had to fight to take it. Am I talking to somebody? It was the right of Esau. But Esau didn't see that it was something to be fought for. He was an easygoing guy. <laughs> Jacob, the mother mobilized Jacob. And Jacob was a natural fighter. He fought and took it. Don't wait for somebody to fight and take what belongs to you. There is nothing called, even though you fight or you don't fight, whether you fight or not, it will belong to you. If you don't fight, somebody will take it. Don't let anybody lie to you. Let them go one and or who. Don't contest the election. I are president. Until now, it takes violence. And so when we are talking about taking, it takes violence. God on your side. Taking advantage of grace to take your health. Taking advantage of grace. I want to challenge you, somebody sitting down here. And looking for who will pity you. You have been sick for 20 years, sick for 15 years. And you want everybody to bow down and beg you. Sorry, sorry. Look, you need to get up and be violent. It's enough of lying down to be sick. Enough of lying down to take drugs. Enough of it. It takes violence. Your land takes violence. Let's talk about you. Because if we don't talk about you, no matter how long, how much you know about demons, if you don't deal with your life, demons will keep demonizing you. The problem of Christianity of today is that we have shifted responsibility of life to witches and wizards and to everything outside except us. Witches don't have power until you give them power. When we talk about the kingdom suffers violence, mean violence is warfare. Say warfare. Violence is battle. Say battle. Violence is fight, say fight. Violence is resistance, say resistance. Violence is strife, say strife. Violence is contention, say contention. Violence is struggling, say struggling. These words are not beautiful words. Which means right from the time of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of God suffers not so beautiful experience. It means you have to fold your sleeves. And fold your trousers and get ready to get yourself dirty. Get ready to mess up. Get messed up by things and you refuse to give up. You fall and you rise. Violence is warfare. Violence is battle. Violence is fight. Violence is resistance. Violence is strife. Violence is contention. It means the kingdom of God suffers fight. You have to fight to have the kingdom of God over you. You have to strive. A young man asked Jesus, are there few that will be saved? A young man who must have listened carefully to Jesus. The way Jesus taught. This guy said, this man doesn't teach like others. Who make people feel that everybody will be saved? You know, there's a kind of teaching that makes you feel everybody is already saved. And everybody will be saved. It's a lie, yo. So Jesus Christ told the man, strive, oh, work hard, oh. Fight to struggle to do what? To enter through a narrow gate. For many shall try and they shall not be able. That's the kingdom of God. If you don't fight, you die. You fight to be holy. You fight to be pure. You fight to pray. You fight to fast. You fight to be faithful. If you don't fight, you will not be faithful. If you don't fight, you'll be hopeless. If you don't fight, you will not be pure. If you don't fight, you will not be holy. It suffers fight. That is why not everybody will make it. 
it is scary, but it is the truth. Not everyone sitting down here says, as everyone here will go to heaven, he said, die. Except you fight. Tell somebody, except you fight. You fight not some days. You fight not some few days. You fight not some years. You fight every day, every week, every month, every year, until the end. The scripture says, whoever endures till the end. Tell somebody, till the end. Oh. Whether you lost your husband early or not, you fight till the end. Whether you, are, you don't have children or you have children till the end. Now, the first territory to be conquered, the first territory to be taken is you. It's me. That's the first territory. Without this territory, no other territory makes sense. The first and the most important territory is you. Turn to somebody and say, the first and the most important is you. The first territory is not finance. The first territory is not the managerial position in the office. The first territory is not about being the next governor. No. The first territory is you. The first territory is you. Look at Proverbs chapter 16 verse 32. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. This is serious. NIV says, better a patient man than a warrior. You know, you see, when we say gathering, the gathering of warrior is very powerful. But when we say gathering of patient men, who will go? But the scripture says, better a patient man than what? Than a warrior. A man who controls his temper than one who takes a city. Which means there is something God wants you to take first. God is not against you taking city because he already gave you land. I started by telling you what God gave Abraham was the land. He promised his descendants the land. That is why the Jews can accept to die all of them rather than giving up the land. Which means if you are not careful with your territory, it can break you. What led to Israel losing the land? It was not the land, it was the self. A man. Each of them had names. The kings who didn't honor God. The kings who could not rule over their temper. A political office can destroy a generation, a territory for somebody. A medical profession can wipe out a generation. If a medical doctor has not conquered the self, it can be the greatest destruction that somebody can meet. If a minister has not conquered the same, it can be the, the greatest agent of Satan. Because the worst agent of Satan is not somebody with horns and big mouth and dark clothes. It could be the carrier of a Bible and a, a garment, a white garment wearer. The one who goes in the name of the Lord is the most destructive agent. If he has not conquered himself, he becomes an effective instrument in the hand of Satan to destroy those he was meant to protect. If a mother does not conquer the self, he can become the one who will sell and, and sell out the destinies of the children. Am I talking to somebody? God is more interested in you taking your territory, your personal territory, than you taking the whole of Nigeria. And so God says, as far as you can see, but you need to first of all see who you are. You need to first of all see the condition of your heart. You need to first of all see the condition, the disposition of your soul. That's the first territory. The scripture says, better a patient man than a warrior. Now, in the place of patient, you can put all the, the good attributes of a human being. Better a humble man than a warrior. Better a kind husband than a warrior. So when we say warrior, you can pray and sweat. And at home, you are a demon to your wife. He said, I take my territory. Which territory? You've not taken the first territory. Take that one first. Tell somebody, take that one first.
Better a patient man. So God is redirecting attention. We like warfare. The greatest place of warfare is the self. Because every war begins with the self. What destroys Nigeria is not corruption. It's corrupt people. The self. Better a patient man. Better a humble man. Better a sincere man. Better a honest man. There are many people, somebody will give you 50,000 naira to go and do business and bring back profit. You change location. You change address. You change phone number. Only 50,000, oh. And you use part of the money to settle people in the whole neighborhood. So that when they see someone who looks like that person, they will let you know the person has come. And you disappear until the person... You see, people come into people's business and they run it down. Destroy people's businesses. And we stand and say, give us, give us, my tell them, my, my, when we pray, when we pray, let's have uh, um, financial territory. No, 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 no. If you are given 100,000 on loan, will you return it? If you understand me, let me see your hand. Oh. So before you conquer financial territory, conquer your dishonesty. You see, David was a man who took territory. David took Zion. Nevertheless, David took the land, of, the land, the Jerusalem from the Jebusites. But you know what? David had not taken himself. Second Samuel, chapter 11. In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's man and the whole Israelite army. They, they destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah, but David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof of the palace, he saw, tell somebody, what are you seeing? He saw a woman bathing. <laughs> the woman was very beautiful. Was it the fault of the woman that the woman was beautiful? Because sometimes we make holy people, I mean, we make beautiful women in the church look like they are criminals. Every, sometimes there is, if, how a beautiful woman walks in, people begin to buy. There's something wrong. It's not the fault of a beautiful woman that she's beautiful. Am I talking to somebody? So it's not the fault of a beautiful woman. It's the point is that a man who has not conquered his heart, even a cat, will cause trouble for him. The whole story here is that David conquered territories but had not conquered himself. If you conquer mighty territories and you have not conquered yourself, trouble will look for you. There was nothing wrong with that beautiful woman. All beautiful women, you are right, is a gift from God. Let David take care of his heart. The scripture, look at the next verse. And David sent someone to find out about her. You see? He's not seeing that is a problem. What do you do with what you see? <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. Praise God. You will always say beautiful thing. If you like, use dark lenses three times and block your eye, you will see. The scripture says, for the pew, all things are pure. The scripture says, blessed are the pew in heart, for they shall see God. Which means, if the heart of David were to be pure, he will see God in that beautiful woman. He said, whoa, what a wonder. Man, God is still in the business huh? of doing beautiful things. That is it. But David did not see God because at that moment something had, had, had happened. Yes, that, that's why David prays in Psalm, I think Psalm 19. Say, from, from hidden fault, acquit me. <laughs> the ones that people don't know. That's the real one. And they told him, isn't this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah, the Hittites? And then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him and... 
Now, fast forward, the husband was killed. When he discovered the woman was pregnant, sent for the husband, tried to get the woman, the husband confused. Drink wine. The man obeyed and kept the regulation. During warfare, I'm not supposed to enjoy myself. He refused, he refused to go and sleep with the wife so that he can lie. See how impure heart has led to adultery and is giving birth to lie, deception, dishonesty. That's why a lot of husbands, the kind of, and a lot of wives too, kind of meetings that don't happen, meetings that are not in existence, husband in meetings that will never happen because of dishonesty. Somebody is in you, you say, yes, I have just arrived for Tagot. One thing leading to another. Maybe began with what somebody saw. What have you seen today? You need to conquer. This is the real, the first territory. Tell somebody, I can see this is the first territory. Then the first, the man refused. Eventually, he wrote a letter, gave to the man. The letter killed the man killed all our soldiers. As a king, he was meant to defend and to protect. He killed those he was supposed to protect. Fast forward. Amnon. If you read from that chapter 11, chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 15, he's talking about Mfna. Trouble. Trouble from that moment. This man has shed blood. He, he, he didn't kill Saul and God promised him an eternal dynasty but now he killed his own soldier and God cooked up issues for him Amnon brought rose against Tamar and there was incest as if that was not enough Absalom killed Amnon that took Absalom away as Absalom was away corruption was brewing in his heart because when you kill doors have been opened for destruction and the man who was the most handsome and the most treasured son of David rose against the father. David stood against Saul, but this time around he could not stand against Absalom. You can see he lost the throne at least for weeks and months because of his own son. No soldier rose against David. His own son rose against him. And turned his allies, those who were the most faithful people to David, including Ahitophel, they rose up against the king, sponsored by the most handsome son, because David could not conquer the territory. You see, if you don't conquer your heart now, if you don't conquer your life now, the best car you have can kill you, the best opportunity you have can bury you, the best, the best business deal can end your destiny. That is why God permits certain people to wait for a long time in the waiting hall of heaven, because he knows once the next level is released, they can be buried six feet below. Rise up and say, I will not be buried. <laughs> Lift up your tongue and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I will not wait until I am buried. I receive grace to take the territory. I receive grace to take the first territory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. What will you do with marriage as a territory? When God gives it to you as a territory, if your heart has not been conquered, conquer your heart from pride. Take the territory of your heart from pride. So many women, everything that happens just waits. Let me just marry. The younger sister of the person who has promised you marriage, you see the person say, all this one you people are doing, let me just get into that house, all this will change. Maybe that is why you have not yet gotten into the house. What are you planning to do with the next opportunity you have? Conquer the pride in you. It may be what will destroy you. Conquer the Greek. Gehazi was a man who had an opportunity to take over from Elisha. The same way that Elisha had opportunity to take, away, take over from who? Elijah. Elisha will have handed over to Gehazi. He served him the same way he served Elijah. You know what happened? Neman, he brought gold and silver and he was not happy that Elisha did not collect them. He said, this man is a mumu, let me go after. He came back, in a few minutes he became a leper. He said, this, the leprosy of a Neman, which means when Neman was healed, leprosy was looking for somebody. <laughs> he 
Elisha saw it. He said, okay, you have not even allowed the leprosy to land somewhere and you have gone to be dishonest. Take it, you and your descendants. And the scripture says, Gehazi became leprous from that moment. That is why we have not heard of prophet Gehazi. People who have not taken over in offices as they should have taken. People who have not taken over in business. People who have not taken over in families. People who have not taken over. Destinies that were made great. People with great opportunity but delayed, obstructed. Destiny rising against them. Nature rising against them. Everybody, people, God can see in the spirit. Life can see in the spirit. Once this one is given advancement, people will be buried. You need to conquer something. Conquer your heart. Conquer pride. Conquer arrogance. Sauciness. Vanity. Businesses have been destroyed because of vanity. Marriages have crumbled because of vanity. Somebody using money that should have been in the investment, taking care of children, just to carry one small pouch, one bag. In order to belong. Belong to a party, a club you don't belong. Thank you, Father. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Friends and Partners of Grace Family Global Outreach. You can be part of this grace revolution by becoming a Covenant Partner today. Allow God to use you. Our account details are as follows. Bank. Zealot Bank. Account name, Grace Family Global Outreach. Account number, 101-42-978-63. For inquiries, please call 081-804-33-225 or 090-738-38742. To all our covenant partners and friends, we say thank you. Like the widow of Zarephath, your oil will never run dry. To order for the books, messages, and other resource materials, please call or send an SMS to 080-660-46346 or 081-804-33225. Videos are also available on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Grace Family Outreach. To stay connected, like us on Facebook at Grace Family Outreach or visit our website at www.gracecommission.org.